right, Scraggy Rugby Podcast. I'm Rob Murphy. Connacht outclassed at the sports ground by a better team who came here, played a better brand of rugby in the end, really, in terms of winning rugby. Uh, no doubt about that. Had by far the better performers on the pitch, deserved their win. And if you're listening, Jake White, that's how you take a defeat. Anyway, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, no, I'm not. I'm depressed. <laughs> Our listen, life's too short. I wouldn't worry about it. But at the same time, ah, these are the win- these are games you have to win in an 18 game season. It's only 18 games. You have to win your home games. Doesn't matter who the opposition are. You have to win your home games. And we were well, well beaten today, and deservedly so. Better team won. Four tries to two. No arguing with that. Oh, absolutely not. And there's a, well, maybe four tries to three, but still, it's just a question of how much they were going to beat us by. Um, mm. They were. They did everything they did last week against Leinster and then realised, but they clearly what they'd done is over. What didn't we do right last week? And they didn't do an awful lot right with the ball until the 65th minute. They did everything right with the ball. They made a few changes, a few changes were forced them. They lost one very good back row in Ollie Griffith and decided to bring in Tim Basham, who turned out to be even better. Um, yeah. Uh, can't argue with it. Very well, well done, well done the Dragons. Just very un- well done Dean Ryan, well done the, f- the 23 guys who went on the pitch. If I was a Connacht fan in my car going to work or on a Sunday morning going from a run, I think I'd want to hear from management and players right now. So here is Andy Friend and Paul Butt. All right, uh, Andy Friend, we'll start with you. Um, I, I guess the starting point is a very disappointing defeat, uh, some contrast from last week. Yeah, it is, mate. Um, yeah, we sat here last week and it was all smiles and... Uh, celebrating what was a really good performance and uh, what was it, eight days on so we had the extra day of recovery too we, we're sitting here scratching our heads looking at that saying it's, uh, that's certainly not fast, it's certainly not relentless and we weren't adaptable uh, Half time 12-8 though, you're four points off it did feel like a 50-50 game at that point judging by the way they hung on at half time defended kind of quite well stopped them because, you know, stopped Ken and Bates try, it was good work from Holmes so were you concerned at half time what was said? Well, we said at half time that we hadn't really, we didn't feel like we got a foothold into the game. We thought it was a, a slow game. Yeah, they were clever in, in slowing the pace down. We wanted it to be quick. But, but again, we, we didn't move fast enough either, Rob. So, you know, our body language didn't, didn't you know, exude energy and bounce and wanting the, the game to be quick. So we sort of fell into that trap. Now, we, we discussed it at half time. Um, I thought there were elements of the second half where we were a little bit better. But then we had, we, you know, our, our turnovers, our handling turnovers and penalty count was, was way too high. So we sit here now with a pretty heavy defeat looking at it and saying, well, you know, that's it's certainly not the team we want to be, but we've got to own that. You know, we, we obviously have partisan eyes on how we cover the team. We cover the same team all the time, but you know, there was another team out there that are working really hard to do something. They were a better team tonight, weren't they? They were. Yeah, they were. They were just more workmanlike and more clinical in what they did. You know, and they definitely had a greater sense of game control than we did tonight. So you must pay uh, due credit to the, to the Dragons. Um, you know, the, they were the better team tonight and they, they leave here with five points, so well done to them. Connick made an awful lot of handling errors and, and that's individual errors that obviously they are what they are. When you say game control, what would you look at now as, as being key beyond the, the individual mistakes that, that just didn't work for you? Well, I think, again, we, we've got to go, if, if we say we're going to be a fast team, well, we've got to play fast. And uh, I, I still think there's too many elements to our game that are fast in how we're getting set for set piece stuff, uh, what we're doing with penalties. Now, we didn't, we made a conscious decision, and, and I'll wear that, that we wanted to take points tonight because we felt that trying to get ahead of the Dragons, they wouldn't be a good team chasing that didn't necessarily work out um, in that manner. So that's why we were we were taking the shots at goal. Um, so we, we got to a four-point lead there at halftime. Um, but they were just patient with it. And they were, you know, so we need to look at that. If we are a fast team, you know, we got that quick tap in the second half where Caelan Blade took it. That sort of got, brought the game alive, to life. Mm-hmm. So we need to have a look at what we're doing off those penalties. Um, it Does a fast team have to slow it down? Are there times to be adaptable, which is another part of our, our uh, our game style and our identity, but yeah, tonight we didn't get the mix right, and, and I've got to wear that. Mate. Got to try to get back within ten. Restart seemed to be a problem, but just mistakes as well that followed them. Yeah, we, yeah, we couldn't seem to ring it, win a trick there. We, you know, I felt like we started to get a little bit of a foothold, and then we'd have a simple turnover, a simple error, and we'd give them opportunity to come back. You give Sam Davies a, a chance to kick a goal too; he ain't going to miss him. So, um, yeah, we, we, we didn't. Uh, we didn't help ourselves in that area. 
Welcome to town last week, written off now as they've gone into Munster. Back to the underdog stack. Yeah, um, and that's the reality of it, mate. We, uh, yeah, we don't deserve to be anything other than written off after that performance. So that's for us to change now. Thanks, Andy. Um, Paul, yeah, it must be so disappointing. I mean, you came off the bench to great effect last week, but the whole team played well last week. I guess it's, it's a whole team collective disappointment now. Yeah, it really is. Um, I suppose we're looking to play fast, like Friendy said, but we didn't. I think the game is such a, a flow of energy between which team can get the energy. And whenever we had moments, particularly in that first half, when it looked like we were going to break through and then get the big energy off that, we made a simple mistake, whether that was a handling error, a penalty, or, or, or just a turnover at, at rook time. And if you don't get those big energy givers, it's tough to play fast and play the way we want to play. And that's what came against us today. Well, I, I think I'd back you as a group, and most Connick fans and uh, followers would, uh, in terms of line out catch and drive. So why did it not work tonight? Do we have to give a lot of credit to the Dragons disrupting you? Or would you look at that as a group and think there was a lot of errors there? There were errors on our part. Um, but in fairness to the Dragons, the way they defend malls, where they stand high and reach over, we could have been better uh, accounting for that in our preview. But we could have adapted better during the game as well. Um, the, way, yeah, the way they defended, particularly Joe Maxima there, who was here with us, he just stands up high and gets an arm and, and is awkward, and we probably didn't do enough to get rid of him. Yeah, you do well. The, uh, maybe that attack too in the second half, a lot of Connick forwards were close in. It got very disjointed. Were you aware of all the injuries in the back line? Does that really make things harder for you guys? Or is that something you pay attention to? No, I don't really pay attention to I suppose, again, it goes back to the energy thing. It's mm. You need big moments, you need some sort of a half break and capitalise on that to really give you energy. And when, when we're making errors and turning over the ball, it's hard to keep the energy going and it just gets really frustrating. But again, we've got to be better at dealing with that. Well, it's in, it's in our nature to get a little bit uh, bigger picture and start thinking all the hard fixtures ahead. But Connacht have bounced back quite significantly. They made a thing of it really in terms of one week a disappointment performance, next week a big one. I know you want consistency, but right now you just need a bounce back, fair enough. Yeah, and look, we're going to review that on well, tomorrow on Monday. And we will come back stronger. But like you said, it's the consistency we want. And we've got two games now, two big games, to put two good performances together and get two consistent performances in. We, we obviously would have much rather have a win tonight going into that. But look, we can't do anything about that now. So we've just got to put our thinking cap back on it tomorrow on Monday and then fire in on Tuesday. OK, so you just heard from Andy Friend and Paul Boyle. Uh, I didn't have batteries for my recorder, so that brings back old podcasts, doesn't it? It does indeed, it does indeed. Why don't you go to William and me in the game to see what we were thinking as the game went on? Yeah, William's going to be grumpy. Here's William being grumpy with Alan. OK, William, the sun is shining. The pitch doesn't look very slopey. And we could be in for a cracking match. Yeah, it's great that the hill's been fixed in a week. That's, uh, that's, that's great work. Uh, yeah, it should be. It's a beautiful evening here. It's it's warm. It's a light breeze, and it's a big opportunity for Connacht to continue what they did last week. That's what you need: the consistency, the accuracy, and if they play as well as they did, they'll win this match. It's just coming up to 20 minutes. Score is Connacht six, Dragons three. Not much of a game, really. No, no. It's very disjointed sort of game. It hasn't picked up any pace at all stopping and starting the referees got involved a bit penalties from both sides but uh, Connacht have had a couple of opportunities they've, they've moved the ball but it really hasn't caught fire yet No, defence is on top let's hope we get a better second 20 minutes half time score Connacht 12 Dragons 8 Dragons have scored a try Connacht almost had a try held up over the line but it's still not much of a match No it's a poor game Alan it's uh, I'm tempted to say it's been played the way you'd expect the Dragons to play. It's very similar to the game last week against Leinster. They just they slow it down, they scrabble around, they work very hard in defence, and they seem to get inside other teams' heads a bit. And Connacht have uh, switched off at times. The accuracy is gone. They've tried to get pace in, but they haven't been accurate enough to use the pace that they've created. Haven't created much space. That was the first time inside the 22 for that held up over. They're still. I think they're still okay but they need to reset at half time here um, particularly just in regard to what they're trying to do it's, it's a game that's been played between the two 22s nice try for the Dragons uh, but Connacht have got to up it right after half time they've got to get some domination you don't want this game tight at 60 minutes certainly don't so we'll talk to you then oh. 
just gone 61 minutes. The Dragons have stretched their lead to eight points, William. It's been a disastrous 20 minutes since halftime. Yeah, Connacht have really struggled. Dragons have scored two good tries. Connacht got in for a try, but unfortunately it wasn't converted. And then they've just handed back a pretty soft penalty, which uh, Sam Davis has kicked. Still have a chance in this game. Uh, it's breaking up a little bit now as the substitutes come on, but Connacht are going to have to up your accuracy. They've been stripped repeatedly at the breakdown area. Crowd getting a bit frustrated with everything, but still still a chance, but they're going to have to play well for these last 20 minutes. They certainly do. They're getting hammered at the breakdown. Let's try and see, let's hope they fix it before the game finishes, but I'm, I wouldn't be too hopeful. Well, that's probably one of the worst 40 minutes we've seen in the sports ground in a long time. Been beaten 35 points to 22 by the Dragons. Yeah, that's the inconsistency of Connacht writ large. Um, really poor performance, great performance by the Dragons. They were the better team by a huge distance. But Connacht, it was error strewn, uh, unforced errors, uh, stripped regularly at the breakdown area, poor handling, stupid penalties. That's a really, really disappointing performance. And how you back that up from last week, I don't really know. Um, Dragons, that's only their second win for the Dragons here. But they just looked hungrier. They were in total command at the breakdown area. Sam Davis ran the game. And um, and Tane Basham, who I think we might have discussed uh, in the midweek podcast, well, he was man of the match and he was immense for them. Really impressed by them, but Connacht, I'm, I'm sort of baffled. I, I, I don't know. I'll have to go home and watch it again and see if I can make anything out of it. Right, we're ready to, uh, you know, properly just have a quick chat. But what we were saying, Alan, and I think it's, it's fair, is like we're going to rewatch this and chat about it in the midweek pod. Ooh, sign up to our midweek pod. But like, that's not just to get you all to sign up to our midweek pod, but also I think we just need to take a breath because there's so much wrong with it. We could give up about so many things. Three of us have come at three different angles and we're all arguing with each other, going, no, it's about this, no, it's about that, no, it's all about this. But we can all agree that it's probably about everything. Yeah, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of everything. You could you could ask the question that we you know we won so many penalties in the first half and and kicked the goal, never actually kicked into the corner to try and put pressure on. Um, but then again, they were they were beating us up in the pack, so maybe it was a it was a good idea. But we never really got far enough ahead of them to cause a problem. And I'd question the the quick tap penalty we gave. We kicked down the field, which they scored their first try from. Oh, that was when Jack, when we won a brilliant penalty on a great defensive stand, and it wasn't a quick tap, but. Jack, I think just Jack did what he does sometimes which is like let's move this game on I'm going to find touch really quickly and we'll get up the field but he didn't find touch Ah, because on our side did you, see, you didn't see that no he, he basically did do you remember he used to do this sometimes where it's like referee says right go and he does it so fast it kind of sets a tone for the team as they run up to the line out and it's like let's get on with this but he just didn't find touch that's what happened there and that actually fits in with what Andy Friend was looking for from the game was tempo so I'd say he'll be not so annoyed by that as much as other things yeah I suppose execution again comes down to execution the amount of unforced errors like I know William was asking me are, well, are they all unforced and immediately someone dropped the ball <laughs> on, on the field yeah. and it happened so often the yeah. amount of unforced error was incredible which was again maybe they were forced in just the mental pressure that, that the Dragons were doing because the Dragons did it to Leinster last week too the Dragons have a good scrum as well and they're very good front row and we're not used to that because we seem to match up against the best of them pretty well but I feel they got the better of us maybe Connacht will argue decisions from the referee but they certainly got the better of us overall oh, look, the decisions of the refer- referee just changed the amount they last fight didn't change mm. the fight I mean the referee's decisions don't, 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 don't explain specifically why you on got... some the scrums you think uh, yeah the scrums were odd he, he has interpretations that I disagree with I think I think we have I, I think he allowed I think he was very very quick on the um, um, not rolling away, which is why we got five penalties in a row. And I think it, I, I, I thought he was great on that, and I was delighted. I, I, and that's where I, we were kind I, of having I, a, at loggerheads. I thought he was actually a good no, referee. No, no, that, well, I thought that, but we were extremely strict on that, and yet you seem to be allowing. I was, I saw at least three occasions, and at least twice leading the tries, where Connick by on his feet was 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 doing everything that he's that is that they say you should do to get a turnover try, making a clear effort of lifting the ball, and he let it go. But it's. Yeah. But, but how it, much we lost by not that we lost but if he does it for both sides it doesn't really matter and from what I can I think I had a quick glance at the penalty count and I think there was 15-10 against Dragons so, so there you go yeah and le- so let's we watch it and yeah, we talk we about midweek uh, and, and see if you're right because I felt there was something refreshing about it like uh, we had trouble with our communication so we couldn't have him up all the time in the comments we we're going to have to work on that but uh, I felt he was just so short in his communication so succinct 
that it's just better. Some of the referees here in Ireland who are getting a bit of criticism lately, some of our leading referees, and I think they deserved it. Um, Mr. Brace down in the Munster game last week didn't have a great performance, in my opinion, and that's been written about. But my point is, uh, too much elongated conversations instead of you can still you can still get your point I, I do think what is interesting is that the TMO tonight was last night to Alfred Ulster and, and uh, Mr. Yes. Van, Mr. Van de Weyst you've asked for it before uh, I, I think yeah. it's really really good yeah, I'd, yeah, like to, I'd like to I'd like to see them possibly come with I'd like to see South African t- uh, assistant referees touch judges because I just wonder maybe just maybe we might see I think there's a fear sometimes with, with, with judging and given that how much can go on in the breakdown it's impossible for somebody to do everything in the breakdown and marshal the offside line and it would be interesting to see what the South African touch judges will bring to that Brilliant and that's fine and let's talk about that again in the future but right now Alan I'm looking at a stat that's going to just send shivers down the spine to people who don't think about this stuff too much seven of Connick's next eight games are either against Irish provinces or Champions Cup games against Severn say against and Leicester I felt this season was... I, I wrote about it last week. It's going to be a bit of a reality check. Not in the sense that we're losing the run of ourselves or anything like that. It's just Connacht are now up against elite, high-level sides. Some of the top 10 teams, all top 10 teams in Europe probably, mm-hmm. out of seven of the next eight games. That's a hard ask. And when you have a slip-up like this and one bad performance, it, it's a mountain to climb. Oh, no, it's huge. It's massive. It's let's just... This, this. You know, they've dug themselves into a huge hole and it's going to be incredibly difficult to dig themselves out of it because you look at you look at what Dragons did to them today and months do that plus 10. You know, that's that's their game is to disrupt, disrupt, disrupt and that's what the Dragons did brilliantly. They were absolutely excellent yeah, and, then, and then were brilliant when they needed to be with the ball in hand. When they got the opportunities, they took them, they worked it. Jordan Williams is by no means an electrifying, spectacular player, but that's why I think he's outstanding, because he uses his rugby smarts, he uses his natural ability, his chip and, uh, for, uh, and catch for the first try, his assist for the second try, where he beat Tom Daly brilliantly. Ah, stop, he's a superb fullback, and he's just one example of players who stood up tonight. Yeah, Sam Davis as well. That, that oh, his little uh, kick through for the try, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, um, Sorry, it's uh, Holmes on the wing, isn't it? Holmes, yeah. yeah. He was superb. Yeah, he was, actually, because Dave mentioned Sam Davis during the week to, to be worried about him, and he was he dead right. Dead right. Well, and Holmes right. saved I, a I, try as well as scoring two tries. He's the one who held up Caelan Blade. Like. I was kind of hoping we'd have the Sam Davies that we get every every now and again, yeah, where yeah, he was yeah. terrible. Unfortunately, this he was Sam Davies. Like yeah. This is Sam Davies who, who was on the verge of Welsh Caps. Um, yeah. Uh, look, the, the Dragons are kind of the. Con- <laughs> this is going to. I have to phrase this very well. The Dragons have kind of been treated in Wales like Connacht were being treated in Ireland. And, that, yeah. and what they've done is okay. But unlike in Ireland, the Welsh Rugby Union has gone, oh, maybe this isn't good. Uh, maybe we actually should make sure that they get a fair crack. They've made some impressive signings. The most impressive signing is the coach. Yeah. I mean, that was an English style performance, and we it know was. how we struggle against the Muslims. Um, I also, like, I just one point as well, which is really important about what we were doing over the last few years, Alan, and they, is they got a point against the, dra- the Ospreys. As disappointing as it was, and I watched that game, we've all watched a lot of rugby now, and we're delighted it's back, and they should have won it maybe. And they got a brilliant point against Leinster, and now they have five points. Seven points from these first three games they're disappointed to lose their two home games but that's not a bad start that's a heck of a start I think they're they're going to go home very very happy first time since 2004 most points they've ever scored against us first time to go to try bonus point in Galway so a lot of things for them to be happy about I also think, think they'll look in, in retrospect they'll be very disappointed that they didn't beat Leinster last week oh absolutely I agree and and they should have won the Ospreys game I think they certainly play well enough yeah, to I, have mean, a I mean I mean this is what happens if you this is this is what happens you get a good coach you get good committed players and you get backing from the union you can do anything I think they're not quite as in bad a position in terms of the Welsh groups as we are in the Irish group we could we could be absolutely brilliant beat everybody around us but if we still might finish fourth to the Irish teams that's just the, that's the nature of the beast at the moment they could finish really well and you know finish fourth to the Welsh teams you just don't know the, our, the Welsh groups is not as strong as the Irish group but it's better than the other two groups and they're unlucky to be in it and we're extremely unlucky to be to get back to your point about the next seven games we, we, I'm not saying we will not win the next eight no, games. No, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, that either. I'm just saying I'm the done, reality is I'm just saying, hard. Yeah, this is, this is what you get with the way the competition is set up yeah. and that we're in the Champions Cup. You're in the Champions Cup, you don't play Mickey Mouse teams. No. You're playing the best of the best. That's the whole nature of a Champions Cup. Um, it and, could go horribly. And Leicester won again today. Oh, my God. And Severin say, OK, they're not going great, but they're, they're a powerful side. But, you, but what you do is that you, you, you decide that that level of performance, that level of... Of just pedestrian. It was so goddamn pedestrian uh, today, and it was it was entirely 
mental. I'm not saying they believe their own hype, but I guarantee you there'll be no sodding podcasts from around from every other journalistic outlet this week praising Connick because no, no. And maybe that's just where. Maybe we just need to reset and go. No, that's again we've drawn a line in the sand, but that's not acceptable. But I have to say, look, can we? We have to say, look, the Dragons were bloody good. But if that's the worst team in the Welsh Conference, Wales isn't in too bad a place. Listeners will have heard me say that. Like you lost to a better team tonight, Andy, and that, that's important because it's just something I know. I look, you shoot me for saying it, but I know a certain GA county that I do a podcast for in the midst of all their analysis at all their finals. Just once in a while, it would be nice if people just hit a break and said, Do you know the other team were trying to win as well? And they got good footballers, and you know, that's part of sport. And you know, Jake White needed that wake up call last week. There are other rugby teams trying to do things on rugby fields, it's not all about you, Jake, and it's not all about Connacht. No. And the Dragons are trying to do good things on a rugby field and the bloody deserve to win. So can you answer me this? Because I think we're all in agreement. We don't need to say any more on that. Just to finish, right? We're going to analyse this in a bit more detail. So we're not going to have a big reaction of, this is wrong and this is wrong. Of course we're not, because it was brilliant last week. It wasn't great this week. We'll tell you more about it during the week. But where do you sit right now on Connacht? Just try and give me an overview. Just this evening. So people are going to listen to this Sunday, Monday. Like, How should they... What's your thoughts about where we are right now? Um... Just kind of overall, how do you feel? And it can be, you can absolutely sit in the fence here because you no, do yeah, need to I'm to... disappointed, there's no question. I'm as disappointed now as I was ecstatic last week because yeah. we, we performed last week, we didn't perform this week and, and there seemed to be a lack of a lack of something out there, a lack of energy, a lack of, I don't know what it was, like losing Dowling early in, early in the match he's didn't help. He's been brilliant, yeah. He's been superb, there's a real dog about that lad and he's a really clever footballer and then when Prendergast went off, that didn't help either. Um, we missed 45 minutes of Papalihi too. And yeah, we could have done with a bit more go forward on of, of I think him. That's my view, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. He did really well going forward last week, you know, um, and he didn't create any penalties in the defence last week either. So, but yeah, it just it was it was though last week was a huge hype, and then we weren't able to live up to the hype. We were the favourites, and we couldn't live with it, and we're back to this inconsistency that which is seems to be there for Connacht and it's very know. difficult to get rid of and then Dave we all know like you could sit here and go they won't beat Munster they're not having a hope they're having a prayer Munster are angry about last year there's no chance and they won't beat Ulster because they're giving up home advantage and there's a neutral event. and you could be all down but we know Connacht could run out against Dome, uh, in Dolman Park and score four tries and be outstanding well yeah because we, it wasn't like we went down to, it wasn't like we went down to what are you saying Lily? Just walking up and down the line. Oh, yeah, again, yes, the one step forward, two steps back thing. Ah. Yeah, yeah, very good. She's, she's no, it's, like, this is like one of those games. <laughs> three words, it's a film. <laughs> Can I point out that we bet Munster not exactly coming in with the most consistent set of form the last time we went down there? So let's. Yeah. I don't know. Look, we could easily go down. No, that's what I mean. I, I could see ah, it happening. We, we, but also, like on form, we should struggle. Yeah, I think it would have helped if they'd made the 11 changes that we're going to make for, for our game oh, rather yes. than for the game to make. Um, they're that, lining up. I, and they're going to spend the entire week talking like Leinster about how their entire pride was hurt by that Rainbow Cup defeat and yada yada. Yeah. we so angry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, look. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I don't blame them for no, using no, it. No, don't blame them for using it, but, you know, if Munster are going to plead the poor mouth, I mean, when you've got no. RG Stamen well, and Damien, da, Damien yeah. Dealandi is coming back to you in December, yeah. I'm not buying it, lads. Look, if they're the be- they are on paper, they're the better team. On paper, they're certainly out there in the better form. Um, we'll see how they go tomorrow against the Scarlets. Um, but yeah, um, and it's down in Thorman with the, those lovely people in Thorman who always are welcoming, welcoming you with, with warm embrace and loving words uh, that will be there next week as well. So, yeah, but then again, we have gone down there one. We've gone down and one there when there's been nobody there, and we've gone down and one there when there's been somebody there. Stop. So You're getting too positive. I can sense it. As I mean, but also, we've <laughs> gone down there and been apps handed our arse Thank handed you. to us after 15 minutes. Thank so, you. you know, balance you're looking for it. that's okay Lenny any thoughts well I guess after that performance tonight then we'll probably get a good performance look I think just even listening to Andrew Friend he's he'll obviously going to analyze exactly what they did all week mm. because when he talks about that lack of energy and not understanding why there was a lack of energy you know that he's going to analyze absolutely every single thing they did last week to try to find out what it was that produced the performance that he believed was lacking in energy. So I'd say it's going to be quite an interesting week from their point of view in a- analysing that. I wonder if it is they, some of the players had one eye and next week. They were looking at the Dragons going, yeah, we should beat the Dragons. They've lost twice. Let's move on. Let's, you know, they just didn't respect them enough. No, I agree 100%. All right, that's it. Lenny, thank you for joining us just for a brief, brief second. Dave, thank you. Alan, thank you. And we'll do that. We'll, we'll get a rewatch from a few... 
a few of our regular guests and we'll have a podcast midweek set up for Munster talk to you then don't forget sign up online become a club member and you can get all these midweek podcasts and become an executive member and you get like things like a zoom chat with us once a month looking forward to that let's get my hair cut for that well I've got my hair cut I have to get it cut again what your hair short enough as it is (laughs) we're out of here thanks folks loose cut it loose break out or nothing changes side